Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Cplash and today I wanted to talk a little bit about my first impressions on Shadow Throne, the savings and what we can expect from the box set if it's worth it. If you enjoy the content consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below. Alright let's get into the video. Alright so as you may know during the Warhammer preview online from last weekend we got our first look at the next Warhammer battle box. It is called Shadow Throne and it includes Adeptus Custodes and Gene Steeler Quills. So I already made a video about Warhammer Day Online. If you want to check it out, it is in the top right of this video. And I've already been talking a little bit about the narrative context of this box and that Gene Steeler Quills are on Holy Terror and what is even going on. And I'm fully expecting a book to release alongside this box. Other than that, in this video, let's go over the, the savings real quick, my first impressions and figure out what the points in this box are and what we can expect. All right, so first up, let's talk a little bit about the pricing I'm expecting for this box. This box seems like your typical Saga of the Beast, Piety and Pain to play a battle box, which includes a good number of models, but it's not Indomitus crazy. So I am fully expecting this box to cost 105 pounds or local equivalent that would be 140 euros 170 dollars or 290 australian dollars so that is the price i'm expecting if it's going to be much more expensive than that the box is not going to have the best savings so we have two new hq units in this box so i've taken the prices from other units that are my in my opinion comparable and use the pricing here. It might be wrong by a couple of dollars or pounds, but it won't shift the greater narrative of the savings as you can see them on the screen right now. For the Reductor Saboteur, I use the Kalimov pricing, although that may be a little bit too optimistic. It might be a little bit more expensive than that. And for the Blade Master, I use the pricing of a regular captain instead of a named character, which I think would be very fitting for this kind of character and for this kind of model. Um, I'm very certain that this is going to be the pricing we can expect for the Blade Master once you release it separately, but as always, we'll have to wait and see. Other than that, we can see that we have a decent savings percentage, right around 36%, which is exactly the sweet spot we want. Usually we expect for Combat Patrols or other value boxes, it is usually around 33%, so being above that is great. And that is exactly why I hope and expect Shadow Throne to cost £105, because it makes a lot of sense. Both armies could use a couple more new players, especially Gene Stiller Quilts are underrepresented, at least in my area, maybe that's a bubble problem. But all in all, I think getting players to start a Gene Stiller Quilt army and a Adeptus Custodius army is not the worst thing. So making this box a little bit more attractive when it comes to savings, if indeed what you see on the screen is true, would be a good idea from GW. Next up, let's talk a little bit about the composition of both armies. I really like the Gene Stiller Quilts composition from a general standpoint, but it is obviously not ideal for veterans. For new players, it offers a Brute Coven, which is basically essential as a Gene Stiller Quilts player, but every veteran has at least two of those boxes or more and really doesn't need another one. Neophyte hybrids are always good, but I expect veterans to have enough of those as well. And just buying the box for the Reductor Saboteur just doesn't make any sense. So I don't think this is targeted at veterans at all, which I think is a little bit of a shame because Gene Stiller is already underrepresented and giving the veterans that are playing this army for a long, long time something interesting to buy would have been a great thing. Other than that, yeah, it's purely targeted at new Gene Stiller players. And yeah, it is what it is. As for the Adeptus Custodius half or the Talents of the Emperor half since Sisters of Silence are now fully featured in a new codex, it is just an HQ, five Sisters of Silence as we expected and three Terminators and there's really not much more to add here. Adeptus Custodius don't have a lot of options to include in such a box because either the points are going to be way too much or yeah, the savings are going to be extremely high or low depending on what exact composition you're going with. But now that Sisters of Silence are actually available in the new Adeptus Custodius Codex, I also think uh, creating a combat patrol 
for the Adeptus Custodius will be easy for GW, considering that the Sisters of Silence are, you know, relatively expensive. And they offer low points values. I think their most expensive squad right now costs 90 points. And yeah, just throwing them in there is a good idea. But yeah, Sisters of Silence separately are insanely expensive. And they save the Adeptus Custodius half a little bit. But all in all, it's probably going to play fine. It's around 400 points of Adeptus Custodius. And yeah, it's, it's nothing to write home about though. I wish there was a little bit more... I don't know, something in here. A guard squad would have been a little bit better, but Terminators are obviously good right now. They have decent rules, but all of that will change once the new codex arrives in December as well, at least as far as I can remember. Now, even though the codex is will release in December or shortly after that, here are the current points cost, and I'm expecting these to go up by just a little bit or not at all, especially for custodians. It really depends on if they get that extra wound. And for Gene Stealer Cools, it depends on if they want to make them even more expensive to collect or if they want to buff them a little bit, make them a little bit stronger for the Neophyte hybrids especially. And um, yeah, make them a little bit easier to collect and a little bit cheaper to collect to entice new players to stick with the army. It really depends on the way they go. But for now, here are the points. All right, so what you see on the screen right now are just the two lists with the models included and their points from models that exist currently and in the current codex. In addition to that, for the Gene Stealer Quills, I'm expecting the Saboteur to cost another 75 to 90 points, depending on how good those mines actually are. And for the Blade Master, I'm expecting another 90 points, because I really want him to be a little bit cheaper than a current Shield Captain for, you know, 500 point games or, or just lower point games with Adeptus Custodes all in all. That would be perfect, but we'll have to wait and see. The points all in all are okay. The current setup of the Gene Stealer Quills half is a little bit weird because you're just flooded with HQ choices. And that's interesting. Um, yeah, it turns out we'll have to wait and see how the Codex changes that. Maybe the Brute Coven will get another kind of stratagem or list building stratagem. So you can spend your CP on that to, you know, shift the army chart a little bit and lessen the number of HQ slots it takes, and so on. We'll have to wait and see all on that. But yeah, as it stands, Gene Stealer Quills have a lot of HQs. I hope the Blade Master costs less than 100 points. And that is that. One last thing I want to mention, because I actually appreciate that kind of stuff, is that the 32-page Shadow Throne book included in the box contains narrative missions. We didn't get that, for example, in the Age of Sigma Dominion box, which is a shame. Because I really think that those small narrative missions in booklets included in those two player boxes or in boxes that contain two armies in general is important and it adds to the to the models and especially for new players, it adds a way for them to just play the lists even though they are not fully legal 500 points lists for combat patrol. It just lets them assemble them and play with them and that's kind of important if you want to, you know, entice new players into a new army and not having to spend another 50 bucks or something to add another box for both armies on top of what you're already paying for Shadow Throne. And lastly, if you're interested in more Shadow Throne content, I will definitely put out an analysis, a detailed analysis containing all the rules, the points cost, and how to expand both sides to 500 points and 750 and 1000 points and so on. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel. I will upload all of that as soon as I have all the information I need to provide the videos to you. All right, I hope this video was of help to you and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.